Glory to God forever. You are welcome to this brief but powerful broadcast. We are taking our reference from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 49. And we are looking at verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 49, from verse 10. Quickly, share this broadcast to somebody. Let him know that there is a brief one coming. And I believe it is for the blessedness of somebody. This is the day that the Lord has made, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. This season is the end of the year. And you've got to understand that one thing about God is that he always ends well. I don't know how the year began with you, but I certainly believe it will end gloriously with you. Because God is a concluder. God is a finisher. God is not only the alpha. He's the omega. He's not only the first. He's also the last. It's not just the beginning. It's also the ending. I declare in the name of the Lord that the God who have begun this year with you, we end it gloriously for your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the God who has begun this year with you, we end it gloriously in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The God who is not just the Alpha, but also the Omega, the Finisher, the Completer, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, he will end it gloriously with you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I'm praying again for you in the name of the Lord, the God who is a concluder, the God who is a finisher, the God who is not just the Alpha, but the Omega who is not just the first, but the ending, and the beginning and the ending. I declare the name of the Lord, except God is not the one that began this year with you. If he's the one that began this year with you, he will take you to a glorious conclusion with testimonies. The scripture said, though the beginning be small, the later end should greatly increase. I'm seeing somebody listening to me whose ending is about to increase. The September, the October, the November, the December is your season of increase. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's your season of increase. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I dedicate somebody listening to me. Whatever will not secure your increase in this last part of the year is destroyed out of your experiences, is destroyed out of your life. Whatever will not secure and guarantee your increase in this last part of the year is banished out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Gila Babush Kanama, Ivra Lete Parada, Iva Lagaskata, Veleke Te Poro, Igavale Te Te, Malete Te Te. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord God who have begun this year with you, we end it gloriously. <laughs> I believe you better type an amen there because it's surely going to be so. It's surely going to be so. The Lord is a concluder. Don't forget, he's a finisher. The Bible spoke about Jesus. That is the author and the finisher of our faith of your belief, of your expectation, of what you are believing God for. He's not only the Alpha, he's the, he's the, he's the finisher. And I declare everything that will guarantee your completion gloriously may be added to your life in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever we add value to your life may be added to your life. Whatever will secure your increase, Whatever will secure your good conclusion may be added to your life. Is it money? Is it personality? Is it open door? Opportunity? Anything that will make you end with joy, I command it into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare you are not ending the year with sorrow. No, you are not ending the year with sorrow. I declare whatever the enemy has organized to bring to your life this ending of the year, to make you end the year in sorrow. They are destroyed out of your experiences. They are taken away from your life. It will not happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Affliction, accident, issues, sorrow that will make you end the year in weeping, make you end the year in mourning. Such things are destroyed out of your experiences in the name of Jesus Christ. Kemalagos, Zimamanta, Varuku Paranta, 
Ikaklite Narandos Kuparika. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that man, that woman whose activity will make you end the year badly, I stop them now. They take Shata Maguvari Taklite Ivaronkos Kapara Ivrile Geto Mama. That man, that woman, that boy, that girl, whose activity will make you end badly. I stop them. I stop them in the day. I stop them in the night. I stop them in their moves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ambalo govera teteta. Ivalakwayan tanamas kuvareta. I declare in the name of the Lord. You know, there are some endings. It doesn't matter how bad the year has been. That just an incident will just happen. That will just light up the ending of the year. I speak that for you, that it will be happening from now till the end of the year that will light up the year. Oh, happiness, good happiness, good occurrences that will just lighten the year for you. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be good happiness that will lighten the year for you and just pack a light of rejoicing, a spark of light of celebration. I declare in the name of the Lord, the, 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 no, the, the enemy thing has finished you. No, no, the year has not ended. A miracle is still possible. Don't end until it is ended. Don't give up until it is ended. Don't give up until it is ended. God is still on the throne. He said the people of this world and the heathens, they gather together, uh, planning against the Lord and his anointed. But he said the Lord who sits in the heaven shall laugh. He shall laugh at their foolishness. He said he will react them, react to them in anger and in rot. He will scatter their plans. I declare the name of the Lord. All the gang of so frustrate your 2022. They are destroyed suddenly, put to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm with you in prayers. I want you to understand that you are not alone. No, you are not alone. I'm with you in prayers. My prayer for all my viewers is that this year we end gloriously. My prayer for you, you will end with testimony. A prayer for you, you will end celebrating. Amen. That by the end of the year, you will not just do a thanksgiving, pretending. No, 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 no. Your thanksgiving will not be a pretense. There will be reasons for your thanksgiving because you will see activities that God will do these remaining months of the year that will make you to dance, not as if you are pretending, but in the reality of God's doing. Shall you do your thanksgiving? In the reality of God's performances, shall you do your thanksgiving? In the reality of God's activity in your life, shall you do your thanksgiving? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kalovarata. Kemale tekare. I'll be quickly having a brief teaching. And it's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 10. Look at what it is. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 10. I'm reading from the King James Version. It said, They shall not hunger nor thirst. That's my prayer for you. They shall not hunger nor thirst. I remove you from the list of those who will end the year in hunger. Those who will end the year in thirst. Which means... Long, looking for something that never happens, expecting a goodness that never manifests. Test. I remove you from that list in the name of Jesus Christ. Neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. He's talking about affliction. I remove you from the list of those who will be afflicted in this last part of the year. Those who are going to end the year in the hospital. You are removed from that list in the name of Jesus Christ. For he that had the mercy on them. That's the key word I want to explain today. Underline the word mercy. For he that had mercy on them. Talking about the God who had mercy on them. Which means it is the mercy of God that guarantees provision that guarantees protection. I'm going further. For he had had mercy on them, he that had them, shall lead them. Even by the spring of water shall he guide them. That is talking about direction. Three major things that are here. Provision, protection, and direction. 
And the summation of it all is that these three things can only come when God have mercy on you. When God have mercy on you, it means your direction, it means your protection, it means your provision is going to come via mercy. How do you have the mercy of God? How do you have the mercy of God? I'll just mention some few things. How to always obtain God's mercy. Number one, by showing mercy to others. By showing mercy to others. When you show mercy to others, then God secures you for mercy. Matthew 5 verse 7 reveals that scripture. The second way by which you assess the mercy of God is by asking deliberately for the mercy of God. You've got to ask. You can see that in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 47 to 50, the story of blind Badamaos, who when Jesus was moving away from Jericho, all, he has concluded his ministry. He has finished all he needed to finish. As if the year is concluded. But the blind Bartimaeus was at the conclusion of the journey. Just like we are concluding here now. And he kept on crying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible said he didn't stop crying out. You can assess mercy from God by asking for mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. And the scripture revealed all those who demanded for mercy from God always had his mercy. You go to from Genesis to Revelation. Whenever mercy is demanded for by God, he always make himself available. So now from now to the end of the year, keep on asking for the mercy of God. Lord, have mercy on me. Over this case, have mercy on me. Over this issue, have mercy on me. Mercy me, you are not qualified, but God qualifies you by his goodness. What's the first one? The first one is showing mercy to others. When you show mercy to others, God will show mercy to you. Remember that whatever he must sow is what he reaps. When you are merciful to others, God will show mercy. Number two, you will demand for mercy. Number three, when you participate in the Holy Communion, Holy Communion also activate the mercy of God. Holy Communion activate the mercy of God. We will not be able to go extensively on this, but some other time we will dwell extensively on it. When the Holy Communion is conducted, which is symbolism of the Passover, remember the Israelites in Egypt, the mercy of God was provoked when they did the Passover, which is today our Holy Communion. The mercy of God prevailed over Israel. They didn't know God. They were not holy. But the mercy of God prevailed. And all those that died in Egypt, they were exempted. So taking the Holy Communion can exempt you from judgment. Taking the Holy Communion attract the mercy of God over the impending judgment. Number one, be merciful to others. Number two, ask God for mercy. Number three, participate in Holy Communion. Number four, contact with a man who have obtained mercy from God. When you are having a relationship with somebody with whom God has made a covenant of mercy, you have the mercy of God. You are in a relationship with somebody, a man sent by God on the mission for God, then the mercy of God will rub on you because of your association with him. There was a story about Paul who was traveling to Rome. They had a storm on the way and all of them were to die. But God said, because of Paul, 
all of them will be saved. So when you are associating with a man sent by God, God can, because of him, because you are relevant to him, and God wants to use him for a very special assignment, he will rub his mercy on you. Save your life, bless you, prosper you. Number five, that is sovereign choice of God. God can just decide to have mercy on you without you asking for mercy. Let's read, let's read Romans 9, verse 15 and 16. There he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So it's not of he that will it, nor he that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. Of the Lord that showeth mercy. That's the book of Romans 9, 15 to 16. So the Lord can sovereignly just choose who he said to have mercy upon. And I pray, may you be the choice of God for his mercy in this season. I'll read again. Romans 9, 15 to 16. Hear it. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will also have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Now, that is... Number five by the sovereign choice of God. Number six, by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a vessel of mercy. That's what he said in the book of Romans 9, 23 to 26. You become a vessel of mercy. You can write down the reference. Romans 9, 23 to 26. Titus 3, verse 5. Psalm 102, verse 13. Let us just read that. Psalm 102, verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. So when you become a child of God, you become a Zionite. And God said, once you become a child of God, that is the time to favor you. The time to have mercy on you. So when you give your life to Jesus, in case you are listening to me right now, you are not born again. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as the one that shed his blood for your redemption, he died for you not to die. He worked for you not to weep. He, he didn't marry for you to marry. He had no child so you can have children. He went to hell that you may not be found in hell. He paid the full price, stagnated for you not to be stagnant. He paid the full price. God became man that you can become the child of God. And he shed his blood to wipe away all your sins and to give you a new turn of life if you ask God for forgiveness. So once you are born again, the mercy of God comes upon you. You become a vessel of mercy. That is number six. Number seven. When you have the fear of God, mercy is attracted. When you have the fear of God, mercy is attracted. Look at uh, uh, verse Psalm 103, verse 11, and Luke 1, verse 50, verse 50. Let's look at Luke 1, verse 50. Luke chapter 1. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. It doesn't change. From generation to generation, from generation to generation, it doesn't change. Once you live in the fear of God, once you live in the fear of God, obeying Him, because you reverence Him, He will have mercy on you. It's there, documented. From generation to generation, it doesn't change. It's an eternal law that once you live in the fear of God, you have His mercy. The way you go to church, you hurry not to be late, you pay your tithe regularly. Give quality offerings. 
Go out and preach the gospel. The last commission he told you and I, share the gospel to the sinners. You go and share. Help others. In the fear of God, definitely his mercy will show up. It's from generation to generation. It's an eternal law that he shows mercy to those that fear him. Look at it. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. We are looking at another reference, which is the seventh point, the fear of God. Psalm 103, verse 11. Psalm 103, You should be there by now. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Glory to God. As the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Just see the size of, the, of his mercy. See the size of God's mercy towards you. If you fear God. If you fear God. Now, going forward, Number eight, when you confess your sins, you are penitent. You repent of them. Many live in sin. They, they, they don't care. It's like you come late to church. You just behave as if you didn't offend anybody. Will you try that one to your governor? You come late to church. God is already seated and you throw in and you are busy chatting with the ushers. You are talking as if you didn't offend anybody. Don't know that that coming late is an offense against God. And you behave as if you didn't offend God. You're supposed to kneel down as you enter the church and be sober. How can you come before God late? What you will not try to your governor. So when you confess, many live in sin, from sin to sin, they, they don't confess their sins. They don't repent of them. They don't change. But look at the, 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 the last number eight. It says, he that confesses and forsaketh his sin. That is Proverbs 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28. I'm sure you should be there by now. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Today we see people committing fornication in the choir. They still come and sing. They won't go to the leader and say, I won't sing today because I, I, I messed up yesterday. I, I, I won't sing. I won't robe. I won't, I won't be in the choir stand. because I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, No, no, no. They will, they will clean their mouth as if they did not eat. They will still dress well and be jumping in the choir as if they didn't they cover their sin. Look at what the Bible says. You will not prosper. You are a leader, leadership in the church. You fight your wife, beat her to pieces, and you come to church, you wear the collar of a pastor, evangelist. You are into unholy activity, extramarital activity, and you are still preaching. Ah, you are supposed to, to, to suspend yourself and, and wait until you recover. No, we don't see that again. We are, all of us are covering up. We are covering up. But here the scripture, he that covereth his sin, shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have the mercy of God. Whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have the mercy of God. So to have the mercy of God, you must forsake your evil way. You must confess and forsake your sin. And finally, number nine, how do you have the mercy of God? Is to dwell in Zion. Is to dwell in Zion. Is to dwell in Zion. God's consciousness for quality worship in expectation to hear a word from God. What is Zion? It's God's consciousness mm -hmm. for quality worship in expectation to hear a word from God. What is Zion? It's consciousness of heaven. Consciousness of God for quality worship, quality fellowship, 
quality interaction where you are waiting to hear a word from him. Now, if I look, you can see in that scripture, he said, let me just give some few scripture about Zion. In the book of Hebrews 4, verse 16, let's look at that. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Talking about God's presence. Talking about God's presence. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. That's where we get mercy. In fact, that's, that's the source of mercy. Once you come in God's consciousness, meditatively aware that God is watching you, you are conscious of the angels that are around. And you are sure of the cloud of witness in heaven, elders and saints of God that have gone above, they are watching you. You, are, you realize the redemption, the blood of sprinkling, what the blood of Jesus have done for you. You have, that, you have that mindset of redemption. You are very conscious of the presence of God. When you are in that consciousness, you obtain mercy. Not when you are demon conscious, enemy, enemy, witches, witches, and the wizard, mommy, what are them? All the way, are, when that is occupying your mind, you are out of mercy. There is an ecology where mercy is the atmosphere. There is an ecology where mercy is available. When you enter that ecology, mercy is downloaded. He said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. I'll just give you some few examples of coming into God's presence. That that's where mercy is. <laughs> Two examples in the Bible. One in the Old Testament, the other one in the, New, in, in the, in the Gospel. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, the story of Mephibosheth. You know that David made a statement when he became king. He said, is there any left in the house of Saul that I may show him mercy, that I may show him kindness? And they said, there's one person, but he's far away in Lodeba. You see, when you are far from God, the mercy that is available in Christ cannot get to you. That mercy is only delivered in closeness, in intimacy, in God's consciousness. It doesn't go out. It comes. It, 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 it comes upon those who come. That's why God, Jesus, is always using the word "come unto me, come unto me, come unto me." No, He doesn't go to you. You are the one to come to Him. So when you begin to live perpet perpetually in the consciousness of God's presence, mercy is always available. He said, "Who knows where He is? He's in Lodeba. You see, the mercy I have for Him will not go there. He has to come." And they went there to go and bring him. And they brought him to Jerusalem. And the Bible said in 2 Samuel, look at it. 2 Samuel chapter 9. Just look at about the last verse. There. So, well, that's verse 13. Mephibosheth dwell in Jerusalem, not in Lodeba. The Lord is calling somebody. You are too far from his presence. Your mind has gone far from meditating on the reality of God's presence. You can't have the mercy of God. When the mercy of God is on you, favor begin to bring things to your life that you didn't labor for. When the mercy of God is upon you, you will see what happened just now as I conclude. You want mercy of God? You've got to dwell in Zion. You've got to perpetually live in the awareness of God's presence. Always remember God is watching you. He's there. He's in your heart. He's in heaven, looking at you from heaven. He's in your environment of dwelling. Meditatively consider this. And then you consider his power. Always meditate on his power. What makes God God that you have, you have ever known? You read it in the Bible, you can see the awesomeness of God here and there. Use it to meditate and then you burst into worship. 
As you are worshiping him, he will begin to drop mercy on you. Hear what it says. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did it continually. <laughs> he did it continually at the king's table. He ate continually at the king's table by mercy. He wasn't qualified. Mercy qualified him, not in Lodeba, but in Jerusalem. I'll conclude with this story. In Luke 15, verse 11 to 24. Ah. The story is about the prodigal son. He left home and went far. And the mercy from the father's house left him. Everything he had by mercy. The father gave him by mercy. The father shared his inheritance. When he has not died, the guy took all by mercy. And he went far. And everything ended. But the Bible said he came to himself. He knew that his source was mercy. And he returned back to the father. Now hear what happened. As the father saw him in the distance, the father ran towards him, embraced him and kissed him. Mercy is speaking. Why did the father not kiss him in a strange land? Why did the father not embrace him in a strange land? The nature of God. You are the one to come to God. He came to you already in Christ Jesus. When God left heaven and came to earth to die a miserable death on the cross, that's how he came to you. He's not calling you to come. As you begin to practice God's consciousness, as you begin to practice intimacy, as you begin to spend time meditating on God for quality worship, discussing in the consciousness of his presence, <laughs> you will see his mercy. They come boldly to the throne of grace that you may have mercy that you need. That's where we find mercy. And this prodigal son came back. And the Bible said, the father gave me a ring by mercy. What did he do? What qualified him for ring? Ring means authority. He had authority by mercy. He didn't labor for it. Only one thing he did, he came to his father. The Lord is calling somebody for a higher level of intimacy. A higher level of intimacy that you may come close to God. Meditating on the reality of his presence. Meditating on his power and worshiping him and discussing with him in the reality of his presence. That is what he called intimacy. Zion, better, a place of holy interaction with divinity. And the Father gave me a ring, authority. And the father also gave a new garment, honor. And the father killed the fatted cow celebration by mercy. In fact, the, the first song, when he was coming from the farm, when he saw the music and the dancing orchestrated by mercy, the guy was confused. He didn't understand. How can this nasty boy who went to waste the father's party in the straight land, how can he be celebrated? Who is celebrating him? Who is celebrating this idiot? He didn't know that mercy spoke. <laughs> he doesn't understand the language of mercy. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that God will help somebody listen to me. That in the place where you have failed, may mercy speak for you. In the place where you have messed up, may mercy speak for you. In the place where you are not qualified, may mercy qualify you. In the place where you have been rejected, may mercy secure your acceptance. In the place where you are hated, may mercy secure your love. In the place where you look as if you are bound, may mercy secure your freedom. In the place where you are sick, may mercy secure your healing. In the place where you are abandoned, not yet married, may mercy secure your matrimonial settlement. In the place where you are married, no baby, may mercy secure your fruitfulness. In the place where you are laboring, no job, no finance, you are in poverty, may mercy guarantee you prosperity. I dedicate somebody looking for visa. May mercy give you the visa. You are looking for document. May mercy give you document. He came paro kara, librando sapare, he kagwayanta para, ligeglonto pareke, inagus, 
in a goose, in a goose, because you are connected to me, a man sent by God. I declare the mercy that is available with a man sent by God rushes to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. That if God will not do it because of you, may he do it for you because of me. I declare the name of the Lord. In this season, before you see the end of this year, you will testify that the Lord had mercy on me. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Worship and we adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You have not given your life to Christ? This is the best time to do because mercy is available to those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Bow down your head. Say this prayer with me. You want to give your life to Christ right now. Say, Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus who died for me to give me mercy. I receive him into my heart. Father, I have been a sinner. I confess. I promise I will forsake all. Forgive me that I may have your mercy. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change me forever. Give me your spirit that I may be able to love you. Every agreement I made with the devil, I break all of them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you are in Benin, be in church on Sunday. I'll be ministering on Sunday, praying for people. Come with your bottle of oil. I'll be blessing your oil that you may use to defeat the enemy surrounding your life. Six o'clock is the first service, and nine o'clock is the second service and third service combined. Hoping to see you this Sunday. Bless you all. I declare it shall be as it has been spoken. Keep strong. Do what is right. Rest properly. Eat quality food. Take care of your head. Practice hygiene, neatness. Don't forget, Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon. When he comes, may you not be left behind. God bless you. I'll see you in the next broadcast. Bye-bye.